What's up, everybody? My name is Dietrich, and today we are sitting in a 2024 GR Toyota Corolla, and I am going to teach you how to use the dynamic radar cruise control with a six-speed manual transmission. So, the first thing that we need to do is we need to make sure we're in the right mode. So this little button right here that says mode changes the cruise control mode. So we have adaptive cruise mode and we have cruise control mode. Now, if you just leave it in cruise control mode, that's the standard cruise control where when you get out on the street, you push that button to set your speed and it's just gonna go that speed, that's all it's gonna do. But that's not what we're gonna do today. We're gonna push mode again, and we're gonna make sure that we are in the adaptive cruise mode because we're gonna talk about the adaptive cruise control or dynamic radar cruise control, as Toyota calls it. So that is when the car can lock onto the car in front of it because we have radar sensors and cameras and stuff, and we will follow the car in front of us, speed up and slow down. Down. but since this is a manual transmission this one will not bring the car to a complete stop at speeds below 20 miles per hour uh, it will not work it will turn itself off and prompt you to take control of the vehicle if you're wondering what gear you should be in to use the adaptive cruise control Toyota's manual just says use the gear that is appropriate for the road speed. So you can shift gears while the dynamic radar cruise control, adaptive cruise control is active. That doesn't cancel it. So uh, that's certainly something that you can do if need be based on the speed concerns. So the controls for it, as long as we're in the right mode, once we get up to speed, we push this button with the car and the lane lines and the little speedometer on it. That's how we turn the system on. And once you push that button, you're cruising at whatever speed you were when you push the button, as long as you were above 20 when you pushed it. The plus and minus right here is how we go slower or faster, obviously plus for faster, minus for slower. This button with the car in between the lane lines, that turns the lane tracing assist on. So if you have the dynamic radar cruise control active, you can turn the lane tracing on and what that does is if the car's camera can read the lane lines, it will try to help you keep the steering centered in your lane. Um, but you still have to keep your hands on the steering wheel. It's not a self-driving system. It's, you know, not meant for hands-free driving. It wants you to keep your hand on the system and you have to pay attention at all times. This button right here with the little car with the laser beams coming out of the back of it, that is going to adjust our following distance. So you can see the following distance right up there. That's the shortest, that's the longest, etc., etc. And then if I push the lane tracing assist, that's lane tracing assist off, lane tracing assist on, but the little lane lines right there will turn green when it's actually doing something when we're out on the road. So let's get out on the road and try all this out. Okay, here we are, we are on the freeway. We're getting up to speed. I'm going to push the button with the car and the lane lines and the speedometer on it to set the adaptive cruise and now it tells me adaptive cruise mode active pay attention to other vehicles i'm now going to bump the plus button a bunch of times to increase my speed and i am going to go into the center screen by holding the settings button and pull up the little image of the safety systems, which is showing us now what the dynamic radar cruise control is doing. So now what I've done, I've set my speed to 78 miles an hour. I'm actually still in fourth gear, I just noticed. So I'm going to shift into fifth and we are still locked onto the car in front of us and maintaining speed. I'm now going to shift into sixth and I can do that and the Adaptive cruise, dynamic radar cruise is still active. It's funny, you never quite know what to call this thing because Toyota in their advertising literature and on their website and stuff call it dynamic radar cruise control. But when you are actually in the car, it calls it adaptive cruise mode. So if I switch back and forth between the two terms, that's why I'm doing it. I'm going to change lanes and I am now locked onto the new target. And at this point, I don't have my foot on the throttle. I don't have my foot on the brakes. We are just cruising. The car is controlling all of that. The lane tracing assist is active. 
I don't know if you can see down on my uh, display, but the lane lines are green on that display, which means that it is reading the lane markings on the road and it's able to interpret that data. Now, there's no one in front of me. The car is now going to accelerate to 78 miles per hour, except for the fact that this black Subaru Forester got in front of me, so now we're just gonna follow him. But if the road would have stayed clear all the way ahead, I would have just accelerated to 78 just because that's where I have the speed set, and I would have just done that speed. But now we're locked onto this guy, and uh, so he's kind of dictating our speed. If he decides to go faster than 78, then we will just stay at 78 because that's where we have our maximum speed set. So a couple of things to keep in mind while you're using this system is if a car cuts you off very sharply from the side, hit the brakes, take control. Um, the vehicle is mainly looking forward for the adaptive cruise control, the dynamic radar cruise control. It has peripheral vision, but it's not that good and it may not react as quickly as you. So you're still driving the car, you're still in control. When you're using the lane tracing assist, keep your hands on the wheel. The system will actually get mad and beep at you if you don't. Uh, bad weather conditions. I've used numerous systems like this in the rain and they've always performed pretty well in the rain. If it's ever raining so hard that the car doesn't trust its own data, it will just disable itself. If it thinks that its radar sensor or camera or whatever can't see ahead, it'll disable itself. Um, but I do always recommend leaving a longer following distance when you are in the rain. This is actually the shortest following distance I have it set to right now. I'm gonna hit the brake and let this person merge into traffic. Um, just to be polite and because that helps the flow of traffic and then now I am just going to bump up on this tab that says resume and now we are working our way up back up to the speed so in the rain I feel like the systems are fine but use a long following distance to give the car more time to react and more time to brake since braking distances are longer in the rain I do not recommend using this system ever in the snow or uh, ice. I think that that's a bad idea. You should be in full control of the vehicle during those very limited traction conditions. Another thing to keep in mind, what type of vehicle am I following? So right now, uh, we are locked onto a Ford Econoline van. That may be the easiest vehicle to follow on Earth. It knows exactly what it's doing, so no problems there. But two examples I typically use, number one, motorcycles. Um, I always get a little nervous following a motorcycle. The cars usually can do it, but you know, you never want to hit anybody, but you especially don't want to hit anybody on a bike uh, because there's such a higher chance of serious injury. So I typically don't recommend following motorcycles with it only because it makes me nervous. And there have been some cars that I've done these videos on where in the instruction manuals it says don't follow motorcycles. I don't know that this is one of them, but that's just something to look out for. Another one is a flatbed delivery truck with nothing on the bed of the truck. Are you following, is the car locked onto the actual rear of the vehicle or is it locked onto the back of the cab? So if you're in that situation and you feel like you're following a little bit too closely, be wary of that as well. And you know, this is a manual transmission, so this system only functions at speeds above 20 miles an hour. If we do drop below 20, it'll beep at me and tell me that I'm in control. But you can still shift gears. I'm in sixth now. I can put it down into fifth. No problem. I didn't interrupt the uh, dynamic radar cruise. I can go back down to sixth if I want to. Now we are slowing down. But again, I'm not, all I did was hit the clutch there. I didn't use the brake or the gas pedal. We're down to 54 miles per hour. And see, like if I felt like I needed to accelerate a little bit quicker right now, which I really don't, I could downshift it because I am in sixth gear. This is, this uh, cruise control system is really only useful in, I think on highway driving. 
with the cars, with the automatic transmissions that can bring themselves to a complete stop, they're most useful on highway driving as well, especially in stop and go traffic. But you could use them in town, I have on many occasions. That's normally where I film my how-to videos with those. Uh, but with this one, you know, this is, this is road trip material right here. But it does work and it is cool to have it with a stick shift. Just always, you know, pay attention. If the engine seems like it's lugging because you're going too slow, downshift, you're, you can do that. And um, when you get down below 20 miles per hour, you're gonna have to take control, but always watch the road and know that uh, it's your responsibility to drive the car and maintain safe road operation and all that good stuff. If you do have any questions, feel free to put them down in the comments. I will do my very best to answer them for you. And as always, please like my video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And have a great day and always drive safely. Bye-bye. Oh, not like that guy. Don't do like that.